Here begins tape one in the videotape deposition of Cheryl Mills in the matter of Judicial Watch Incorporated versus the U.S. Department of State in the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia, case number 13-CV-1363. Today's date is May 27, 2016. The time on the video monitor is 925. The videographer today is Jeremy Deneen, representing Planet Depots. This video deposition is taking place at Planet Depots, 1100 Connecticut Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C. Okay, Ms. Mills, I know that you're an attorney, so you may be very familiar with depositions. I just want to go over a few ground rules beforehand. I appreciate that. Sure thing. As you can see, there's a court reporter, and the deposition is being videotaped. As you know, you've been sworn in. You understand that the deposition is taken under oath. Are there any reasons why, here today, you would not be able to answer truthfully? Not that I know of. Okay. I want to go briefly over, well, you're an attorney. Can you please tell us briefly your education background, college and law school? I went to the University of Virginia for undergraduate, and law school, Stanford University, out in California. Okay, and when did you graduate from Virginia, from UVA? Do I have to answer that? I'm so old. I graduated UVA in 1987 and Stanford Law School in 1990. Okay. And right out of law school, you went to a law firm, is that right? I did. I went to work at Hogan Hartson, which is a law firm in Washington, D.C., though their name has now changed. And after that, I went to work in the White House. In between period, I went and worked on the Clinton campaign and during the transition. I went to the work in the White House. I was at the White House for about seven years. Okay. And when did you start at the White House? Not a specific date, year-wise. Oh, I know. So it would have been 1993. 1993. God, I'm old. Okay, sorry. Okay, 1993 then takes you to 99? 1993 takes me to about 1999, that's right. I started as associate counsel and I ended as deputy counsel. Now just going back, and again, in the context of your experience as an attorney with respect to requests for records, specifically email records, there was a ruling by Judge Lambert that came out in the Alexander matter that we mentioned earlier from your time in the White House. Right. Do you recall that? I don't. So I definitely remember there were multiple different kinds of litigation while we were in the White House. So if this is about the kind of, do I remember? Do I remember there were litigations at the White House? Absolutely. But if you're asking me to pull on my memory right now as I sit here, I can't do that. Well, I'm not asking generalized litigation. I'm asking, actually, in a case in which you provide a testimony. Okay. Okay. Let's just, let me just ask it this way. Shortly before coming to the State Department, Judge Lambert ruled in the Alexander case in which he criticized your conduct and some others in the White House with respect to the handling of email requests, and I believe the word he used was loathsome. So I've not had occasion to read the opinion. Okay. And you know, I can't speak to both his observation or the set of facts in that regard because I think I would need to, need to do that well. I've always tried my best to be responsive and tried my best to do the best that I could. And I think I get up each day trying to do that. I'm not perfect, but never say that. But I certainly do my best. Ms. Mills, what was your position at the State Department during Secretary Clinton's tenure? I was chief of staff and counselor. Okay. How did you find out about the email, your email account, to use at the State Department? I'm going to object to beyond. Objection beyond the form. And also beyond the scope. You're supposed to be talking about the creation and operation of ClintonEmail.com for State Department business. The approach to processing Freedom of Information Act requests that implicated either Secretary Clinton or Ms. Abedin's emails, and the processing of Freedom of Information Act requests. Her State Department email is not one of those topics. So I'm going to object and ask her not to answer. And I'm going to instruct you to focus on the areas of discovery that you agreed upon were relevant for this case. Okay. And I would ask if you have an objection or if you're going to instruct the witness not to answer that you just do so without speaking objections. It's improper to be coaching the witness during the deposition. I'm not trying to coach the witness. I am trying to give you a basis so you can either change your question or so there's a record basis for why. 
I mean, especially when I'm instructing my client not to answer, which I don't want to do. And I understood that we were going to stay within the scope. Can you read back my last question? Uh, how did you find out about the email, your email account, to use at the State Department? Are you instructing the witness not to answer that question? I am. And you're following your attorney's advice not to answer that question. Is that right, Ms. Mills? Yes. OK. When you started at the State Department, whether it be shortly before or shortly thereafter, are you aware of any discussions with respect to an email account to be issued to Secretary Clinton to be used during her tenure at the State Department? I was not aware of discussions about an email account for her to use. So Secretary Clinton continued her practice that she was using of her personal email. And I don't know that I could articulate that there was a specific discussion as opposed to her continuation of her practice she had been using since she was senator. So did you just assume she was going to use the same email she had before as Secretary of State? I don't have specific memory of the conversation that may or may not have occurred. I know that I understood she was going to be using her personal email and that's what she did. Ms. Mills, you have Exhibit 3 in front of you. Can you please take a look at it? Could you just for the record describe what the document is? Objection uh, to the form of the question. I mean, the document speaks for itself. OK. You may answer. The, the document is email traffic between Chris Levine, who is sharing a news report that was sent to me that I forwarded with an FYI. OK. Who did you forward that to? I forwarded it to Secretary Clinton. And when did you forward that to Secretary Clinton? 30 January 2009. Okay, and to which email for Secretary Clinton did you forward that to? This document says HDR 22. What's the rest of the email? Oh, sorry. At clintonemail.com. Okay, and does this at all refresh your recollection of when Secretary Clinton began using clintonemail.com? No. Okay. And do you agree that your email that you sent to Secretary Clinton on January 30th, 2009 was in respect to your work at the State Department? Objection, foundation, and beyond the scope. I forwarded her the news article because I thought she would find it interesting to read. Interesting as Secretary of the State Department? Well, yes. She was Secretary of State, but it also references her. Are you saying this is a personal email? Object to the form of the question. No. Objection. You can answer. Unless instructed not to answer, you can answer the question. I see. No. You asked a question about whether or not it was or it wasn't. What I interpret you to be saying as whether or not it was a federal record. I'm saying that I forwarded her a news article because I thought she may find it of interest and it had her name on it. Interesting as in respect to her work at the State Department. I don't know how to speak for what would have happened in her brain. Why did you send it to her? because it had her name on it. Why did you think she would find it of interest? Objection. I'm going to object and say beyond the scope and instruct you not to answer. This is not a litigation about whether certain records were turned over or not or what decisions were made. OK, and I was going to interrupt and stop you right there. I've already asked that no speaking objections be made. If you'd like to be, have a speaking objection on the record, we can excuse the witness to leave the room. And you can make your objection if you think that's absolutely necessary. Speaking objection that's outside of scope is sufficient. Thank you. Are you not going to answer the question, Ms. Mills? Tell me the question you're trying to learn. Why did you think this would be of interest? Same objection and instructing you not to answer. OK. I just want to go back in time to 2009, to when Secretary Clinton began using what you've identified to be the Clinton email. Clinton.com email. Yes. OK. How was that set up? Do you know? I was not. Object to the form of the question. You may answer. I was not actually involved in the original setup of the email. OK. Even if you're not involved in the actual setup, do you have any knowledge with respect to how it was set up? The knowledge that I have come from my representation of her as counsel. And when you say as representation of Secretary Clinton as counsel? As an attorney. OK, as an attorney. 
Ms. Mills, with respect to conversations you had about how Secretary Clinton's email was set up, the Clinton email account, did you ever speak with Brian Pagliano? Objection, form, foundation, timing, and going beyond the scope. If you can rephrase your question as to when you're talking about. Ever. Objection, vague. Okay. Are you instructing her not to answer? No. Please answer. Okay, sure. Could you repeat the question? Okay. Did you ever speak with Mr. Brian Pagliano about how Secretary Clinton's email was set up? Yes. When was that? It would have been during the period in which I was representing Secretary Clinton. Okay. Who is Brian Pagliano? Objection. Okay. So when you first came on board, if somebody needed to reach out to either Ms. Abedin or you or to the secretary and they needed to email something, how did they know whose email accounts or their email addresses? Objection vague. So if you could be a little bit more specific, I can be helpful. Okay. Well, you said that there was no directory or no staff sheet with who's in the office and what are their extensions and what are their email addresses. So if someone was seeking to reach secretary or somebody's in secretary staff, they could do that in a number of ways. They could visit you, they could... Okay, email. Okay, by email. If your email was in the State Department system, you could spell, start spelling the person's last name and it would populate with the addresses associated with the people who had similar last name. And then you could look through them to identify who you were looking for. Okay. And let's say for Secretary Clinton, she did not have a state.gov email address. Correct. Okay. So how would they be able to reach her by email if somebody needed to email her? If she had emailed them before, they would be able to reach her. They could come upstairs and seek her email address from a special assistant or others who were familiar with it. Or they could seek to engage her. As a practical matter, Secretary Clinton overwhelmingly met with people. So her modality of engagement was not traditionally the email. She traditionally used meetings and phone calls as a way in which she engaged in her day-to-day -day business for the department. Okay. Jacob Sullivan. Who's he? Jacob Sullivan was Deputy Chief of Staff and managed policy at the department, and then subsequently became the head of policy and planning. Okay. And just by our count of the records that Secretary Clinton returned, we counted 3,887 emails that were sent and 1,412 emails that were received. By whom? Between Mr. Sullivan and Secretary Clinton. Did Mrs. Clinton email with Huma Abedin? Yes. Okay. Again, just for the record, by our count. Objection. Objection, there was no question. You're not here to make a record. This is a deposition. Correct. Do you have any reason to dispute that of the secretary emails that she returned to the State Department, Mrs. Clinton sent 3,490 emails to Ms. Abedin, and Ms. Abedin received 872 emails from Secretary Clinton? Objection. Form foundation and beyond the scope. So I know that Secretary returned over 30,000 emails. I don't know the breakdown of that in terms of how they broke down by individual. Okay. Who's William Burns? Bill Burns was the Deputy Secretary of State. Objection for a moment. Can I, can I ask you, I don't mind you asking these types of questions, but I don't understand the relevance to the permissible scope because I'm not party to the case. Are these part of the Freedom of Information Act requests that implicate Secretary Clinton or Ms. Abedin's emails or the processing of Freedom of Information Act's requests in this action? These go to the Secretary Clinton's use of her email account to the State Department, to officials within the State Department. You know, if you're going to have these sorts of questions and statements, Ms. Ms. Mills, if you can please exit. Okay. Sorry. No, no, that's quite all right. Unless you withdraw your objection. No, I don't. I'm trying to get a basis for asking the questions so I don't have to object. This isn't with respect to processing of the Freedom of Information Act. This is in respect to Secretary Clinton's use of her email as the Secretary of State. But that's not what the order says. It says the creation and operation of ClintonEmail.com. This isn't a debate. If you have scope objections, 
just simply say scope and we'll move on. Now your witness. You know, in most depositions, people try to work together because I do want to be able to have your questions asked and answered that you're entitled to. So I'm not trying to make an objection just for the sake of it. I'm actually trying to see if there is a basis. Then I would be happy to have my client answer your questions. Okay? Normally in any deposition I've done, people are more than willing to do that because the idea is to get you the information that you need and that you're entitled to. Do you guys need a copy of the order? I have an extra one. We don't. We don't need to, you know, I don't need to explain with respect to the strategy of how the questions are asked or with respect to where they fit in within the scope. We believe they're in within the scope of Judge Sullivan's order. If you have an objection as to scope and if you want to instruct the witness not to answer, please do so. And refrain to just doing that when the witness is here. Were there any discussions when you came to the State Department with respect, with respect to requests for blackberries so that the secretary could email while she was in the office? Yes. Okay. Can you, what do you recall about those discussions? I know that at the time when Secretary Clinton started at the department, we had asked whether or not there could be a blackberry that was a department issue blackberry that would be able to be, able to be used inside our office space. The seventh floor where many of the senior leadership work is considered a safe or a skiff, if you will, is a terminology, a sensitive compartmented information facility. And inside the skiff, typically, you're not able to use your mobile device. And so the question was, one, can she get the device that would be able to be compatible with being used in her office? Okay. Ms. Mills. Why did Secretary Clinton choose not to have a state.gov email account? I don't know that I can speak for her. I think she's spoken for this herself and said that part of what she was seeking was obviously the convenience of being able to use a common device. And so that's what she did. Did, at any point, did you discuss with Ms. Abedin or anybody within the Secretary's office, the Secretary's email, and what was being subject to the Freedom of Information Act? I don't have a recollection of having a discussion with somebody in the secretary's office and her email being subject to Freedom Information Act. It was my impression it was. It was my impression that when she emailed, because it was her practice to email people in her state accounts when she was doing state business, that any of those communication would be captured and maintained by the State Department system. Okay. You're familiar with the Freedom of Information Act? I am familiar with the Freedom of Information Act. Okay. So the Executive Secretariat's office who managed the records, let's say with the Freedom of Information Act request that implicated the Secretary's email, how did they go about searching for the Secretary's emails in response to a Freedom of Information Act request so for know. her email? And what about if the subject matter contained communications between the Secretary and others outside of the State Department? So I don't know what would have been the process for how they would have captured that. And I think that's one of the things that is a challenge. And one of the things that I think as the secretary has spoken about, it would have been smarter for her to have had or better for her to have had an account. And if she had to do it all over again, she would. Did you or anybody inform anybody within the executive secretariat's office that Secretary Clinton's account was not captured on the State Department system? So when there was a Freedom of Information Act request with respect that related to the Secretary's emails, did she have the same practice of having somebody search her email account for responsive records? I can only speak to my knowledge. To my knowledge, that was not the way in which information that related to her records, electronic records, would have been captured. Okay. I want to move forward. We fast forward to 2013. When did you leave the State Department? I stopped being Counselor and Chief of Staff in February 2013. Now, I want to talk about the planning and transition to depart from the State Department with respect to Secretary Clinton. Was there any planning with respect, in the context of her departure, with respect to saving her emails that she communicated while she was head of the State Department? Objection, Foundation. If you know or if you don't know, or if you know who? I don't know 
what others might have done in that regard. Were there any preparations with respect to making sure that her emails were retained by the State Department before she left? I don't know. I don't know of any from my perspective. Did you have any discussions with the secretary prior to leaving about the emails that were stored on her ClintonEmail.com account to make sure that those would be available for Secretary Kerry coming in? Objection. Goes beyond the scope of permissible discovery. I don't recall having those discussions. And, it, and you know, I can only speak to what I recall. Okay. And I don't recall having those discussions. Did it ever occur to you when you were getting ready to leave that preparations should be made with respect to saving Mrs. Clinton's emails so that Secretary Kerry would have them if he needed to look something up that Secretary Clinton did when she was head of state? Objection goes beyond the state of permissible discovery. And objection to the form. I wish I had. I didn't, that I can recall. At that time period, there was obviously a lot going on. The Secretary was not only transitioning, there had been um, we had lost our first ambassador in quite some time. And we were stepping through the sets of issues associated with that. And she, too, had fallen ill. And there, and there had been a period of time where we were obviously navigating a whole set of issues in that space. So I don't know that this was something that I focused on and certainly wish I had. What were the procedures and protocols in place for when you left? Objection. Objection. Vague. With respect to records management. And objection goes beyond the scope of permissible discovery. I can't speak to what their protocols and their processes were. I just know that the department is very precedent driven and they have a set of practices that they follow. All right. What did you do with your records, your paper records, when you left? Objection goes beyond the scope of permissible discovery on multiple fronts. Objection beyond the scope and I'm going to instruct her not to answer. Were there any discussions that you had prior to leaving with respect to how the State Department was going to access Secretary Clinton's emails on her ClintonEmail.com server? Objection. Vague. I don't recall having discussions about how someone might access her email apart from what was already in the State Department system. So I don't. I wish I did. So you never thought about how they were federal records that were stored on our email account? And how would the State Department have access to them after she left? Objection goes beyond the scope of permissible discovery. I assume I now know inaccurately that records that were on the state system were ones that were kept forever. Obviously, I've come to learn that's not the case. And I thought since the Secretary's practice was to email people on their state records, that it was resident in the department and set of records with respect to her work at the department. And I thought that would have been there. Well, what about, what about the federal records that were to emails between the secretary and other people outside of the State Department? What about those emails? I wish I had thought about that subset. I mean, I think about when she's engaging in the state business and the business she does with people who are in the department and people who are in the government. And so I thought of those as records that were being captured. I wish I had thought about the fact that someone could be non-government, non-non-state, and those records not, might not be being captured. I didn't think about that. I thought about the fact that her engagement with officials and the government was on there and on their federal assistance. So I thought of all those records were being kept by the department. So are you aware of Secretary Clinton deleting any federal records that were on her email account when she was the secretary? I don't. Objection. Goes beyond the scope of permissible discovery. I don't know if she did or she didn't. Ms. Mills, with respect, are you familiar with the OIG report that just came out? I'm familiar that it was issued. Two days ago. And that's the State Department OIG? The State Department OIG issued a report in the last couple of days when respect, with respect to Secretary, former Secretary, use of email. Have you reviewed it? I have not had occasion yet to review it. That's all we have. At the beginning of the deposition, you were asked about a case involving Judge Lamberth and testimony and opinion. Do you recall that? Yes. Do you recall whether you actually testified in front of Judge Lamberth or not? I don't have memory of testifying in front of him. But it was also during a period of time when I lost one of my mentors, Chuck Roof, and so that period of time was a very painful period of time to me. Did you? You said during questioning that you did not read Judge Lambert's opinion in certain testimony that you and others gave. 
Uh, is there a reason that you did not read it? Yes. Why didn't you read it? You know, I, I work. I come to government because I try to do my best. And this was obviously an opinion that was very critical of me personally, and I, it hurts and disappointing because I try my best. And so the fact that I left an impression that led to that conclusion is painful and, and, and hurtful. Do you have any reason to believe that Secretary Clinton used ClintonEmail.com to conduct government business with her or anyone else in the State Department to avoid the Freedom of Information Act? Absolutely not. Objection. No further questions. I have a few questions on redirect. You also spoke about Judge Lambert's opinion that we spoke about earlier on today. When I asked you questions about it, you didn't recall it. I asked, I answered that I hadn't read his opinion, which I hadn't. It's painful. Okay. Well, I understood your answer that you didn't recall it this morning when I asked you about it. So I had had occasion to step through the, his opinion. Okay. You described his opinion being very critical of you. Did that at all impact you with respect to perhaps being more sensitive with respect to making sure that records are preserved and appropriate steps are taken while conducting searches and responses to document requests during litigation? I think I try hard in all aspects of my job, whether or not that's a government job or not. But certainly when you have the public's trust to do the best I can. But you never discussed record management with the secretary with respect to her email account at the State Department? I don't. Objection asked and answered. Objection exceeds the scope of discovery. I don't know that there's more that I can add to what I've already said today. That's fine. That's all. Thank you. This ends the deposition of Cheryl Mills. We are off the record at 1612.